Hey guys, this is Mary Lee Johnson here with the 21 convention. We just did the 2000 speech for Dr. Ellington Darden, and this is your new book, The Body Fat Breakthrough. Right. And you were saying some stuff on stage that I think everybody found pretty, like, this is way too good to be true. This can't, I've heard, you know, stuff like this before and how to get rich, and, and but you have actual results that are backing it up. I'd love you to tell me about um, your 30-30-30 method well 30 30 30 is a is very similar to what happens with an x-force machine and i got excited about x-force training back in 2008 and by x-force it's a it's like a nautilus machine with a tilting weight stack that gives you a 45 degree angle when you do the pushing and then it gives you a vertical situation when you do the lowering. So you get 40% more resistance on the lowering than you do on the raising. So 30-30-30 is my attempt to perform a barbell curl or a standard exercise in a way that simulates what happens with an X-Force machine. So with a curl, for example, you take 80% of what you'd normally do and you cheat a little bit getting it to the top position. Then you go down very slowly in 30 seconds, or 20 to 30 seconds. And then when you get to the bottom, you turn it around and you come up in the same 20 to 30 seconds. And you do a final lowering in 20 to 30 seconds. So that's three half repetitions in 45 to 90 seconds. And that is a very productive way to train. And I think it makes a deeper inroad and it triggers your body to, to grow bigger and stronger muscles. So you said you trained your wife like that, but you did her on a 15-15-15. Was there a specific reason? Was it because she was a woman, or is the 15 better than the 30 for some things? Well, I, I started doing 15-15-15, and after the final 15 seconds, you do 8 to 12 repetitions. Okay. But 15, 15, 15, 8 and 12 repetitions take about the same amount of time as 30-30-30. So I was looking for a, an easier way to train in working with women. And uh, it, it may not be easier. 30-30-30 is very difficult to do. And it, you become bored with it after three or four weeks. So you gotta really push to do it. But 15-15-15 is a little easier. It's a little easier to stomach, you might say. And what I did with her is I alternated 30, 30, 30 with 15, 15, 15. One day I would do this, and one day I would do that. And that seems to be more effective than doing one or the other exclusively. I saw, you showed her results and they were, they were pretty amazing. And if you wanna see the results, the before and after pictures, you can either get this book or we will probably have them uh, a link to them right below because the results are pretty amazing. Um, now, one of the things on this book, you said that you can lose 30 pounds in 30 days. Yeah. That has to be a weight threshold, though, because I don't think I could do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the people that lost 30 pounds in 30 days, they were obese, mm -hmm. you know, and had had 50 or more pounds of fat to lose. So what would someone who's starting from, I guess, normal, maybe a couple of pounds over fat and they want more muscle, what would their results be more like? Obviously, they wouldn't be well, losing 30 pounds. Yeah, you might be able to, to in, instead of taking 12 weeks, to, to lose the maximum amount of fat that you could lose. You might need only three or four weeks. We've had some women that that lost as much as 18 pounds in four weeks. Let's hope for me it's so, the smaller one. I'd, I'd love it for me <laughs> to be less yeah. time. Um, why is the negative training so effective? Well, the, the negative, you know, when you do the positive form of exercise, muscle contracts, and when it uncontracts, it stretches and lengthens. And this uncontracting mode breaks some, some strong, stable chemical bonds. And when it breaks those chemical bonds with an overload, it causes microscopic tears in the muscle fibers. And those microscopic tears are what trigger the rebuilding process and make a muscle 
become larger and stronger. So it's just more efficient at getting at the, the microscopic tears. I wondered about that. I've always wondered why, when your body gets those microscopic tears, why does it build on it? Why does that muscle grow instead of just healing back to the way it was? Um, well, it depends on how you do it. You, you know, I think what you're saying is possible, that, that a lot of people don't exert that much effort and they feel a little uncomfortable during their workout. They feel some soreness afterwards, but all they're doing is compensating for the, the, the tears, the small tears that they had. When you've got to, I don't want to say tear them pretty good, but I mean, you've got to exert yourself. It's a progressive manner. And uh, you, you've got to be able to withstand some, some tough soreness that occurs in the body. And you've got to be able to rest longer and drink plenty of water to get the good results. But uh, th th there's degrees. You just have to, you have to work through the degrees and sooner or later it becomes outright hard work. It should. You say to lift 80% of your maximum. How do you know how much that is? Well, most guys that have been into strength training, they understand that. They understand a one-time maximum in a bench press, a curl, a squat, or overhead press, they've tried, uh, tried to see how much they could do one time. And with, uh, w with women or with people that aren't into strength training, I just use a, 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 an educated guess at first. I've trained enough people where I know that you're better off taking a little lighter weight than a little heavier weight. And you can tell from the first couple of repetitions whether they need more or less weight. So it's not as difficult as what your question sort of appears. It's like if you came from a country that had no restaurants to Tampa, Florida, and I took you to a restaurant or cafeteria, let's say, you, you, you might want to know, how do I know which foods to select? Yeah. There's so many of them, how do I know? But it doesn't take very many sessions of eating to finally figure out that you don't take this much dessert first and you don't take that much, you know, you take a little bit here and a little bit there and so on. So it's just, uh, it's getting educated in the use of common sense. Common sense is a very good thing. I love, I love anybody who tells it's you how to use that. It's kind of uncommon too. It is, it's areas. the uncommon common sense. Well, thank you so much for being here, Dr. Darden. Uh, thank we thank you, you for, our, for watching, guys, and we will see you again next time. Bye. Bye.